When dealing with rational expressions when they're nicely into one fraction, like these five examples, it can sometimes actually be useful to break them apart again. Now, we will be later on moving into partial fractions, but one technique that you can already employ from this is using polynomial division. So, the main reason as to why you might actually want to do this is uh, I can think of two uh, main reasons off the top of my head. One is for integration purposes. Um, if you wanted to integrate uh, each of these, then it would certainly be easier if you had um, them written as partial fractions or in a simpler form. Some of these will still be uh, a severe problem, of course, for integration. Um, but this process can certainly help. The other is understanding uh, about the analysis of the function um, and thinking about what the function looks like, especially what it behaves like as x increases over time. Um, this is really the methodology if you really wanted to go into how to sketch uh, graphs and move forward with that. Then um, knowing how to do polynomial division uh, for these rational functions, you can then look at, well, uh, this, the curve will approach another curve. So we'll see some examples of that as we work through this. Okay? So, for example, if I had x plus 1 over x plus 2, um, then I can still use polynomial division. I can write x plus 2 down the left-hand side. And I need to have x, so x would go there. So that would be 1. 1 out of 2 is 2. And I need 1, so I'm going to have to subtract 1 away. So that's my remainder. So I get 1. Uh, and the remainder is minus 1. So take away 1 over the x plus 2. So what this is telling me is that this function here, if I had a y equals x plus 1 over x plus 2, and I decided to sketch it, then I would know that as x increases and gets larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, so as I move along the x-axis, then this fraction will get smaller and smaller and smaller, because the denominator is getting larger. And so as x increases, this function gets closer and closer and closer to 1. So the, just the line y equals 1. And so I know that y equals 1 is actually a horizontal asymptote the cur that the curve is approaching. So I can use this uh, polynomial division to show that. So if I now do 2x over x plus 5, I have x plus 5 down the left-hand side. I want the 2x, so x is into that go 2, 2 lots of 5 are 10. I don't have uh, anything there, so I'm going to have to subtract 10. So this would be 2 take away 10 over x plus 5. So for this curve, as x increases, or even if it's going into the um, left, um, so as x is increasing but in the negative direction as well, this curve will tend towards y equals 2, OK? And so I can see that as a horizontal asymptote. Now, for x squared plus 2x plus 5 over x plus 2, x plus 2 on the left-hand side, we'll have x squared, so x there, 2x there. I've already got a 2x, so that'd be 0x. So that'd be 0, that'd be 0. I don't want 0, though, I want 5, so I'm going to have a 5 remainder. So this is equal to x plus 5 over x plus 2. The remainder was 5. So what that means is that for this curve, as x increases, it starts to behave like y equals x. So it approaches y, the diagonal line y equals x as x tends to infinity, okay, in either direction. So that's quite interesting. So close, close to uh, minus 2, obviously something horrible is happening. 
but as you get further and further and further away, this curve will start to look like the diagonal line y equals x. And this is what this analysis can tell you. So number 4, x squared minus 2 over x squared minus 4. So x squared, 0x of minus 4 down the left-hand side. x squared, so that'd have to be 1. So 0x and minus 4. So I don't want any x's, that's fine. Uh, but I want uh, minus 2. So I'm going to have to have a positive 2 there. So I've got this remainder. So this would be 1 uh, plus 2 over x squared minus 4. So this curve clearly tends towards y equals 1 as x increases. And then finally, number 5. You've got x to the 5 over x cubed plus 1. So, x cubed, 0x squared, 0x and 1. So, x to the 5. So, x squared, uh, 0x to the 4, 0x cubed and x squared. Okay. Right, well, I don't want any x to the 4s. Um... So I'm going to have uh, 0x there, 0x cubed, 0x squared, 0x. OK. Um, now, I, for cubes, I don't want any cubes, so 0x cubed there. So that'd be 0, uh, 0x squared, 0x and 0. Now, the 0x squareds, well, there's x squareds, so I don't want any x squared, so I'm going to have to have minus x squared up there in order to cancel that x squared. And that's my remainder. So I would have um, the x squared in the numerator, oh, sorry, the x squared up here, and then I've got minus x squared over x cubed plus 1. So as x increases, this fraction will be overpowered by the denominator. The x cubed will increase faster than that x squared. And so the denominator overpowers the numerator so that as x increases, this fraction gets closer and closer and closer to zero. And so this curve will approach the curve y equals x squared as x increases in either direction. So if you plotted y equals x to the 5 over x cubed plus 1 on Desmos or Autograph, and you overlaid y equals x squared, you'll see that that curve will approach that one as you zoom out.